Hi, I'm Captain Mike. Uh, in this uh, third video, the number three in a series of four I told you about earlier, we're going to talk about uh, melt and pour soaps. And we're going to discuss advantages, disadvantages of commercial soap base versus some that you make yourself. Now, usually when you buy, if you don't buy it in bulk, if you go to Hobby Lobby or you order some of it online, your soap base is going to look sort of like this, okay? It's going to come in a little plastic container, and the top will pop off. And it's not too much trouble to get this whole thing to fall out. Cut it up into chunks, and you melt it in your microwave or in a, on a stove, however you want to do it. Now, this just ha this is, I'm going to show you the commercial first, and this just happens to be clear. comes in all kinds of bases. Okay, that's clear. Uh, this bag right here is full of uh, white, as you can see, and uh, it's part of a 50-pound box I bought. This is all I have left of it. Uh, that uh, someone wanted something in particular, so I ordered 50 pounds, and this is what's left. And I also have some shaving shampoo. Uh, I don't know what the difference is. I can't notice one laver lathering any better than the other, but this, you know, nice shade up kind of amber, orange, whatever you want to say. And uh, maybe that's got something to do with it if you put it in a, a mug and it just looks good. But anyway, you can get anything you want, any kind of soap, with any kind of additive that you would put in it. Now, those are commercial. One like this costs about 10 bucks on Amazon, okay? That's about roughly what it costs. Probably if you got Prime, you'll get it for free, uh, shipping for free. Uh, the other thing that you can do is you can make your own soap base. I've never done that, but we're going to do it in this video. Uh, I'm going to show you what I'm going to put in the soap base and all the other things you can put in it. You're just going to have to pick you out a recipe on the line once I go through this and also watch some of the others. Watch the whole video. Don't just pay attention to me because I'm going to go through the, 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 the uh, do-it-yourself uh, base very quickly. Uh, now, you can ask yourself, what's the difference between homemade soap bases and the commercial soap bases? And uh, number one, if you the, the do-it-yourself uh, soap bases, you're completely in control of everything that you want to put in it. Any kind of botanicals, colors, additives, whatever, you, you can add it yourself. You don't have to buy a specific uh, uh, product commercially that has that in it. You just make it like you would make cold process soap and add it, you know, add the stuff to it. Um, some people find that the do-it-yourself or homemade soap bases melt a little at a higher temp and they harden a little faster. I, I don't know that. I'm just saying, kind of repeating what I have read and, and, and saw on different uh, websites. So, you know, that's pretty much it. It's the difference. Uh, Cost-wise, I haven't done a cost analysis. So, I don't know, but let me show you if you're going to make it kind of what you're looking at. Uh, for instance, you know, now my recipe is not going to have any cocoa butter. A lot of people like cocoa butter, okay? Uh, a lot of people like mango butter. Uh, you're going to need some sorbitol, which is nothing but sugar. Uh, you're going to need, um, oh Lord, let's look and see. You're going to need some olive oil because Funny thing is, none of these recipes that I read of use any kind of vegetable shortening. It's always olive oil, coconut oil, stuff like that. So, and speaking of that, I have several different kinds of coconut oil. This is a very liquid coconut oil. Uh, it's obviously a very, it melts at a very high, a low temperature. Uh, you're going to need, and of course here's the other coconut oil I use, and it's hard rock. Uh, it's 92 degree, excuse me, and you're going to need some glycerin, uh, vegetable glycerin. You can get it in this size bottle, you can get it in this size bottle. Uh, you're going to need probably some glycol propylene or propylene glycol, whatever you want to call it. Some kind of alcohol business, I think, I'm not real sure. Uh, you're going to need some castor oil. After I ran down to Walmart and bought me a bunch of these little bottles, I found my bulk castor oil. 
it's all the same, I'm sure. Uh, but you know, you may or you may not use it in your recipe. I don't think my recipe that I'm going to use today. I keep it as simple as I can. Uh, and you're going to need some uh, um, sodium hydroxide. I keep it mixed up at about a 33% discount, water discount, which may or may not mean anything to you. And I don't know. It may screw this experiment, uh, you know, completely sideways because. That's what I'm going to use. I measured out roughly 2.25 ounces. I'm going to add it to this mess and I'm going to stir it up and cook it and see what happens. Because it's an experiment with me. I want no more uh, melt and pour base than I use. I want to make it probably. Uh, but I wanted to, to make it to, to uh, show you that you can make it. And of course you're going to need a crock pot. You know, stop to it. And uh, that's about it. We're going to make this stuff and see how it looks. Uh, then I'm going to, uh, you know, show you a few things that you can do with the melt and pour. So some of what I think are the advantages and what I think are the disadvantages. So let me get prepped here to uh, start cooking this stuff. I will make some melt and pour base. Okay, let's get started with this. Uh, I have pre-measured all of my ingredients in various and assorted uh, little containers here and I'll tell you what they are as I pour them in here. Again, I haven't done this and I'm going to pour all the before, so I'm going to pour all the ingredients in here uh, as I have been instructed on the videos and the websites. And, uh, but I won't put you through all the stirring and stuff. I'll do a little stirring and then we'll go on to something else and I'll fast forward it or cut it out or some kind of junk. But uh, what we're going to use in this here, I have no idea what the bulk is going to be, is we're going to start with, uh, how much water am I going to start with? Uh, I'm going to start with five ounces of stilled water. I'm just dumping it in my crock pot. It's uh, heating up. Uh, I have uh, 4.8 ounces of coconut oil. It's also called lauric acid, but it's basically just coconut oil. Then I'm going to add eight ounces of uh, olive oil. I'm going to add uh, 3.2 ounces of stearic acid. Now, that's all the stuff that I'm going to put in here until I get this blended up. Once I get it all up to temperature and blended, then I'll add a little sodium hydroxide and then after it begins to uh, get to a certain stage of trace I will add some uh, uh, polyglycol and I will add some uh, sorbitol which is nothing but you can use granulated sugar in, in place of that if you wanted to. So you guys just kind of stay with me while I stir all this stuff up. Uh, you know I'll use this and I may come back to a blender but hey I'll be back shortly. Okay, we've got the oils all melted here and we're fixing to add the sodium hydroxide or the lye solution. Now at this particular point it's nice to point out that you might want to put on some rubber gloves and have some eyewear. So that's just some safety precautions uh, because the sodium hydroxide is caustic and if you get it in your eyes you're going to wish you hadn't done that. So what you do is you take the sodium hydroxide, yes I don't have gloves on but then my hands are so full of cuts and bruises it really doesn't bother me, but pour the sodium hydroxide in. I hope that's enough. It doesn't look like much, <laughs> but I'm used to doing cold process soap. So we're going to start stirring it until it comes to trace. Now initially I'll stir it up with this little deal right here and I also have my handy dandy uh, well used um, blender and it's already starting to trace so we're going to kind of go at it here see if this helps a little bit boy that traced quick We'll find out if I use too much sodium hydroxide. It's not a big deal. This is all an experiment. Yucky, yucky mess. I'm 
this is why you want to wear glasses. Bumping it like this will splatter up in your eyes. Okay, so what the instructions tell me to do from this particular point, see it looks like mashed potatoes, okay? That's trace and you have to cook it. The instructions say at this point uh, you want to cover it, let it cook for about 15 minutes and it's going to kind of rise a little and you want to keep an eye on it, come back stir it a little bit and then you, after you've stirred it down you will um, cook it for an additional 15 minutes. The whole point is regardless of how long you cook it is you're going to cook it to gel state where it becomes sort of transparent and at that point you're going to uh, add your, in your uh, um, glycerin and your sorbitol and I uh, hope they all work out real good. Uh, the glycerin I don't worry about. Sorbitol is, is a granular. It didn't say anything about uh, you know uh, diluting it with anything. I guess I could pour the glycerin in it. That's what I might do is I may take the glycerin and pour it in the sorbitol and see if it'll dissolve a little bit. Then when we come back in a few minutes we're gonna check this and uh, if it's right, rose up any, I'll show you what that looks like. And then when it goes into gel, we'll put the last solution in it. And it should be getting pretty close to melting for soap. So there you go. Let's just kind of hang in there and see what happens. Okay, this soap has been cooking about an hour. And as you can see, it's, it's rising up in there. And I've stirred it down a time or two. The instructions that I have, have been following, say to cook it about an hour. Then add the uh, sorbitol and the glycerin and stuff and stir it some more. So, you know, we're going to put a little glycerin in there and, uh, uh, well, actually that was... Uh, yeah, that was glycerin. Ouch. And this is, you know, glycol. And uh, then we got all this sorbitol. And I actually had added a little glycol to it, try to, to get it to melt. It wouldn't melt. So we're going to see what happens. We're going to pour it in here and stir it some more and just go with it and see what we got. What we may have is a great big mess. But, it won't be the first great big mess I've ever had. And it won't be the last. So, we got most of this stuff out of here. It don't, uh, it don't really matter. Probably should have left the doggone stuff in its powder form, but I didn't. So, there you go. I got all that in there, and I'm stirring it up. And it still kind of looks like applesauce. Again, I don't know. I'm sure the heat will melt the sorbitol because they tell me that it is nothing but sugar. And sure enough, when I put all that in there, it went into a... See if I can do this without burning myself. Because this crock pot's hot. You can see it went into a kind of a... into a... kind of more of a liquid state. And... What's happening? I don't know. But uh, we're going to stir it for a while. And, uh, you know, it says, uh, all the instructions say to dissolve the glycol and, and glycerin and all that into the soap. And it looks like it's clearing up a little bit. So what I'm going to do, folks, is I'm going to gonna stop filming this soap making process. I'm gonna stir it a little bit till I think it's ready to be poured into a mold and then we're gonna come back and I'm gonna show you what my soap base looks like, how it turned out. We'll do a little uh, 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 talking about different advantages and disadvantages to this right here. Yeah, it's clearing up pretty good. So I'll be back in just a little while. Y'all hang on and we should be just about through with this soap base. 
Okay, let's cut to the chase here. <clears throat> Excuse me. My first attempt at do-it-yourself melt and pour soap. As I mentioned before, this is not an instructional video on how to make melt and pour soap. This is a video on just making it because I made a hot process, cold process, and all that stuff. So it was only fair that I see if I could make some uh, melt and pour soap. So this is my first attempt. It did not turn out well. Uh, I do not know what is going on here. There is some soap in the bottom of this. There's something hard, but there's also a layer of stuff on the middle. I don't know what happened. It's not important. I didn't give up. I started all over again. I changed the recipe. This recipe had a lot of stuff in it, including uh, some sorbitol and some uh, 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 glycol, alcohol, if you will. And uh, I probably mismeasured something, probably the sodium hydroxide, because it didn't look like enough when I put it in there. I even mentioned it, if you'll remember, but this is what I got. It was a mess. So I did it over. I made a simpler recipe. I left out the sorbitol, the glycol, and I pretty much went with uh, cocoa butter, coconut oil, and uh, the vegetable uh, 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 glycol but uh, glycerin and this is what I what I got and uh, of course I did not make transparent I just was trying for melt and pour soap and as you can see this is kind of tan and the commercial is kind of white now I did not add any uh, whitener to this the recipe called for it but I said no we're going to just make it without anything in it no arrowroot powder no titanium dioxide, none of that junk. I just put, made soap. So the first thing I noticed on this is it sweats. All of mine sweat. I know there are recipes out there that do not sweat, or they say they don't sweat, and I know there are commercial brands that they say don't sweat. The humidity here is probably 70%. We've got a big hurricane that's coming in from the uh, south, and it's gonna make it all the way to Atlanta and probably beyond. And for the last few days, it's been pushing a lot of humidity. So that could be the reason. Don't care. It's sweating. So question is, is this melt and pour soap? It's got a nice texture to it. You can see it's nice and smooth. And it's not uh, lie heavy or anything. So let's just see if it is uh, going to be melt and pour. I'm going to go ahead and zap some of it in the microwave, and we're going to see. Now the microwave is not the best way to do your melt and pour soap. It heats it up too quick. You need a double boiler, boiler to tell you the truth. But we're going to just see here there's going to be probably a lot of residue and a lot of a lot of skim uh, or skin, whatever you want to call it, forms on this. But we're going to go ahead and as you can see it did melt it. It's a little chunky. But we're going to pour it in here and uh, it does dry very fast. So Yes, this is melt and pour soap. It melts into a, a liquid. I think it took probably 20 seconds or maybe a little bit more depending. I was doing it in five second intervals. And as you can see, it cools real quick, forms back into a solid again. So yes, it's melt and pour, it's successful. And uh, that's it. I'll come back in a little bit and pop this out when it cools and then we'll wrap this video up. Okay, we're almost through here. And we can wrap this video up. Here is the uh, soap that I melted in the microwave and poured into this little mold right here. These are really swell molds. You can buy them online. They come with a top that goes on them like this. And you just leave them in there and you can sell them like that. So anyway, this is what we got. There you go. So it made a perfectly molded piece of soap. So, yes, uh, I can make melt and pour soap. Now, I poured the uh, oil off the top of this that I showed you. Told you there was something in the bottom of it. This is what was in the bottom of it, okay? 
and it appears to be soap and uh, let's see if it'll melt yep it'll melt just fine so it is melting for soap it's not lie heavy I stuck my tongue on it now this one was an attempt not an attempt but I did put the alcohol in it the glycol and so that was one of the steps for making transparent soap and as you can see it is pretty transparent more transparent than this which is a little transparent but they're obviously different and neither of them of course are as transparent as this so it would take a little bit more experimentation to uh, to see how I could get it really clear if I wanted to now there's only one more thing that I'm going to do it melts but is it so what will, will it lather so let's see okay it will lather not as good as my uh, uh, melt in, in my uh, cold process but it's soap it does lather now that was the, the last one let's try this one right here and see how it does be honest with you I'm not sure that's soap I don't know what you'd call it but it doesn't lather it slick it probably would relieve I mean remove some dirt but it doesn't lather like this and one of the reasons it doesn't have coconut oil in it and some of the other stuff that this one doesn't that this does so that coconut oil makes it lather so there you go it's soap I guess and uh, most of this melting pour is made to look pretty anyway although some people do use it uh, for regular soap so that's pretty much it now one of the really nice things about melting pour soap and really the only use I have for it is you can make some really nice looking soaps. You can layer them, you can make these emblems, you know, if your mold allows it, and uh, it works out great that way. Uh, I personally don't think that it is as good a soap as melt and pour. I mean, man, I can't get that off my mind. It's not as good a soap as cold process or hot process but that's just me please don't jump in there and destroy me if all you do is melt and pour and you think it's great because I guess you know it is great in some cases I just don't care much for it now with that being said I am going to do a separate video on melt and pour soap all the recipes that I found online uh, and on the YouTube videos were too complicated for me. Now, by that, I mean I think they had too many ingredients in them. I am going to do a video on the simplest way that you can possibly do melt and pour soap. Uh, and uh, I'll do a separate video on that, and we'll see how that comes out. It'll take a lot of experimentation. Personally, I don't want to spend two hours to end up with melt and pour soap. If personally I would just go buy it but that's me you can buy it in bulk pretty cheap and so rather than spend two hours of my time making it and you know until you get good at it not knowing sure, sure what you're going to get it's just kind of a no-brainer for me but please don't take that as an insult if I like to fool with melt and pour soap but to me it's just an artistic form and that's all I'm going to say on that so we're going to wrap this one up. Uh, the next video, number four, will be on things that you can do with uh, embeds, adding melt and pour soap to cold process soap, all kinds of little, little tricks. And that will be the number four. So thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, this has been quite the journey for me. And uh, I'm kind of glad that I'm through with it. So I'm Captain Mike, and I'm out of here.